Hello and welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. I am Wasbir Hussain. Viewers, you know about the Sikkim Democratic Front, right? The party headed by Pawan Chamling that ruled Sikkim for 25 years at a stretch. Now, last fortnight, 10 of the 13 SDF MLAs joined the BJP, while two other party MLAs moved over to the ruling Sikkim Krantikari Morcha. Overnight, the BJP became the main opposition party in Sikkim that had only been familiar with regional parties for so long. Now, several questions arise. What is the future of regionalism in the Northeast? Why do regional parties always prefer to side with a national party ruling the country? In Arunachal Pradesh, we had seen the Congress transforming wholesale first into a regional party, the People's Party of Arunachal, and then they transformed themselves into the BJP. Now the question is, is Sikkim heading on similar lines? Does the current events indicate the regionalization of the BJP, or does it signify saffronization of regionalism? To discuss these and more, I am joined by top Sikkim Democratic Front leader and former Sikkim MP P.D. Rai, Sikkim Krantikari Morcha spokesman Sonam Chering Venchungpa also joins me from Gang Talk. In Aizol, I have MNF leader Dr. C. Lansang Zuala. From Kohima, I am joined by NDPP, ruling NDPP spokesman and former minister Mr. Meren Tosi Jamir. In Shillong, I have veteran political leader, Mr. Bindo M. Lanong, senior working president of the United Democratic Party. And at the studios in Guwahati, I have Assam BJP spokesman, Mr. Rupam Goswami, and Avina Barbara, a political commentator. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. First of all, let me quickly go to Gang Talk, where Mr. P. D. Rai is there. Mr. P. D. Rai, are you surprised last fortnight 10 of your 13 MLAs decided suddenly to join the BJP while two of them moved over to the Sikkim Krantikari Morcha, which is the ruling party. Are you absolutely stung and surprised? Mr. P.D. Rai. It is like this that uh, we, we were kind of expecting a... Uh, some kind of a alliance with the uh, BJP and so therefore this doesn't come totally as a surprise but yes uh, 10 of our members have joined the uh, BJP in full okay but Mr. PD Rai Sikkim had only known regional parties for so long your party had been in power for 25 years and now it is the Sikkim Krantikari Morcha but uh, you know Suddenly, you have a big national party, BJP, which has suddenly become the main opposition party in the state. Your thoughts? No, this is in, uh, if you look at uh, it, it is a process of uh, BJP integration, I would say. I'd uh, not hesitate to call it that. Uh, if you look at a parallel like the... Um, uh, Arunachal Pradesh, yeah. uh, that would be very close to what Arunachal Pradesh has undergone. Okay. You see, on the 23rd of May, when the results came out, the mandate given by the people was very fractured. I mean, it's almost like 50-50. And when you have a 50-50 kind of a situation, and uh, when you already had uh, the, uh, uh, the Sikkim Krantikari Morcha, or the SKM party, making overtures before the uh, election itself to the BJP. Yeah. And then later on also trying to get in touch with the BJP after the uh, uh, election results. Yes. Uh, I think it was only a matter of time before there is some competition to uh, join the, right. uh, the BJP. Now, the Bharatiya Janta Party has been consolidating its base uh, in the Northeast and recent, uh, you know, even strong people uh, like Mr. Bhubaneshwar Kalita and others uh, have uh, also joined from, they've resigned from the Congress party and have also joined the BJP. All right. So, 
the tide has been moving in that direction tide and so a cons- consolidation of this uh, kind uh, was uh, was okay. uh, i mean for a political uh, analyst this is uh, not something that uh, one would be very okay. surprised okay 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 mr pdr i hold your thoughts let me go to mr sonam sering van sungpa uh, sonam sering van sungpa is the spokesman of the ruling sikkim krantikari morcha in gangtok uh, mr sonam uh, you know the same question goes to you you suddenly have the bjp as the state's main opposition party uh, your first thoughts uh the first comment is that uh, a party which has been there in power for 25 years and who have vouched that they represent the people of sikkim yeah and the grassroots people of sikkim now it's so sad that within 3 months they have switched switch sides to the bjp we have nothing to say against the bjp and bjp party uh, which is a very respected part national party but uh, it is a sad commentary on the politics of uh, the sdf party which has been there in the, the government for 25 years and in some way they have uh, uh, i think uh, misled the people of sikkim and okay. uh, this is what i have to comment on the sda party all right hold on i'm coming back to you mr sonam i'll go to all my panelists for their opening remarks uh, mr marantosi jamir uh, you know it is slightly different in nagaland uh, where the bjp is the junior partner of your party uh the ndpp uh you know but still the bjp is a formidable presence in nagaland today you have 12 they have 12 uh members including the deputy chief minister of the state so how do you look at this development what is the future of regionalism if you look at the recent developments in sikkim yeah was be first of all i won't call the bjp in nagaland as a junior partner and alliances is an alliance and all parties are equal having said that yes the bjp has got a formidable number of 12 uh you see the people's democratic alliance which was a pre poll alliance in the 2018 elections uh, which was based on a seat sharing thing where uh, ndpp contested 40 and uh, bjp has contested 20 out of which bjp has got 12 now in the, in the context of nagaland i think both the bjp as well as the ndpp are we are both comfortable with each other and as far as the ndpp is concerned we are a, a relatively new party a regional party based in nagaland but we are comfortable with the alliance partner and but however i think uh, the case of sikkim and nagaland is uh, different and I, i would say that uh, as of now in nagaland we are quite comfortable with the alliance partner and i think i'm sure they are also comfortable with us yeah okay i'll come back to you uh, mr bindo lanong uh, you are now heading one of the oldest regional political parties in the northeastern region it's a very very important political party the united democratic party in meghalaya my question is uh, mr lanong uh, is there an apprehension on your part that you know earlier it was the congress with which the regional parties were generally in alliance and now uh, since the congress is in absolute disarray and the bjp is spreading its wings across the country including the entire northeast uh, the regional parties are uh, uh, you know naturally siding with the bjp but my question to you mr lanong is there a fear somewhere that the bjp might ultimately you know gulp these smaller regional parties and you will be left with no identity of your own is it correct uh, is it a assessment which you agree no i don't think so the bjp has been here in meghalaya for the last uh, about 20 years mm-hmm. ago about 20 years ago they have been here but there was never a time that uh, they managed to get uh, many seats the maximum that they got was three seats only that was uh, during the uh, t- 2000 2003 election uh, they got th- three 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 mlas right now they have just two they have just two mlas in the assembly of 60 members 
so what is it so that what is, is no the message so what are you trying what are you trying to here. what are you trying to say mr lanong are you trying to say that regional parties are very very solidly poised and comfortably placed yeah in meghalaya in meghalaya uh, as of now the regional parties are doing quite well uh we are a partner of the npp which has become uh, recently a national party the national people's party so bjp they have just two and uh, opposition party is the congress now opposition so party so therefore the yeah. the bjp yes the bjp it... has no no ground as such in meghalaya okay i'll come back to you mr mr lanong uh, let me go to aizol where i have mnf leader dr c lalsang zuala a very articulate leader of the mijo national front uh, dr lalsang zuala uh, you know it, it the last elections that you fought in mizoram both the assembly election as well as the lok sabha election uh, you are a part of the neda and nda but you fought the bjp uh and you won the elections in a very very decisive uh manner last time dr lal sang juala how do you look at this equation now the question is we are having this debate today in the <coughs> context of the development in uh in sikkim where the people voted a regional party to to power and the opposition party was also the regional party that is the sdf but now uh you know these 10 mlas of the sdf have joined the bjp there is a protest already in sikkim they saying that you have violated the people's mandate so you should resign how are you viewing this entire development and how do you look at the future of regionalism yeah thank you very much uh as uh, mr had uh, had jigua hadigua a uh, founder of the rss has rightly pointed out that it is not merely some piece of land that is called nation uh, a nation or a state is formed by people who have held the same thoughts the same custom the same culture and the same traditions since long past mostly the ideology is entirely the ideology of uh, first of all we congratulate the bjp p uh, that they have the landslide uh, victory and and yeah. having this big wave uh, a tsunami in india which uh, has been going on but mostly the ideology is entirely different than that of the bjp as compared to the sentiment of the mizo people the mizo culture and tradition is deeply rooted in our religion so okay. suffranization or this uh, uh, hindutva or whatever uh, you call it itself uh, repels repels okay we are not discussing religion uh, dr lal sang jola therefore there is dr lal sang jola we are uh, not discussing ideology yes. we are not discussing religion right now my simple question is we have a big national party rc right, right. earlier this is simple you know earlier the big big national party was the congress now the big That's national party that now the big national party is the bjp my question is simple now earlier the regional parties were aligning with the aligning with the congress and now they are aligning with the bjp my question is do you see a threat to regionalism it's a simple question is there a threat to regionalism that's why i'm saying that's why i'm saying that's why i'm saying the the culture the tradition and uh, okay. the, uh, everything is uh, very different from that of the sentiment of the mizo that's why so you are saying there that is there, no therefore fear. there is no threat therefore uh, there, there is no there threat is no that is fear. what you are saying there is no Therefore, there, there is, is no threat at all. Okay, I'll come back to you, Dr. Lal Sangjola. There Jola, is, I'll, so I'll, to say, no chance. Okay. Yeah. So to say, there is no chance for the wave of the mainstream suffranization or whatever it is in the. Okay, uh, fine, fine, fine. I, got, I get your point. I get your point. Uh, I hold your thoughts. I'll come back to Rupam Guswami, the BJP spokesman, last. But, uh, uh, but, Avinav, you know, everyone is talking from their respective states' point of view. 
uh, Nagaland, Meghalaya, and Mizoram. My question is, I want a broad picture from you. Is it North has, North, the Northeast has been a bastion of the Congress party? No longer so. Uh, it has all, then, uh, when the Congress was in power, it was the regional party which was playing a dominant role. Now, in several states, the BJP has a full-fledged government on their own, duly elected by the people with a massive mandate, like in Assam, Tripura, and Arunachal Pradesh. In other states too, they are part of the government where they are mostly either joining, they have either joined regional parties or they are aligning <coughs> with regional parties. My question is, uh, what do you see, how do you see this trend developing? Is the BJP going to gulp these regional parties at some point or do you think uh, they can coexist? Uh, if, you, if you look at this tendency, on one hand, you can see that the BJP is trying to expand rapidly into the different northeastern states, and I think they have the right to do so. Yeah. And on the other hand, if you see the regional parties, some of them are trying to resist the advance, and some of them are in alliance with the BJP, because for many of these regional parties, till today, their chief competitor continues to be the Congress party. So in that situation, I would, like to, I would like to resist myself to look at this entire situation through a binary opposition. Mm -hmm. It is not as if that the BJP is completely saffronizing the region, and it is also not the case that BJP has actually regionalized itself. Because if you see, and the way that I would look at it is that the, is that the regionalism continues to be a flexible instrumentalist approach for the BJP, through which it tries to create the political conditions that would allow itself to unleash its ideological project. And while doing it, so it would in also, in, in, it would in, also mo modify in, its ideology in a significant way. In that, in that way, you are saying that uh, regional parties are a big help or they are <coughs> aiding the BJP uh, in the scheme of things. That's what uh, basically in simple terms you are saying. Mm -hmm. In certain cases, like I said, so if, if you look at in some of the states, of course, in the case of AGP, the, over there, the regional parties are actually helping the BJP to make inroads. But okay. in other states or, or some other regional parties, they are actually resisting okay. the advance of the BJP. Resisting that. It's either way. Now, now Rupam Goswami, uh, you know, is there what, the main charge, the main fear? I'm not saying this is the fear across the board. But there is fear in some sections, some of the regional party leaders, uh, you know, people who are uh, proponents of regionalism, they say that BJP is a very big national party that has been proved this time in the election verdict, the massive mandate it has got, it's a huge national party with a lot of resources. Therefore, at some point of time, the BJP may completely overshadow and gulp the smaller regional parties, even if they are allies. Now, what has happened in Sikkim, 10 regional people who won in a regional party ticket, they have joined the BJP and BJP today has become the main opposition party suddenly in Sikkim. Now, how do you respond to this fear by some sections? Let me clarify. Uh, Vasbir, there is no doubt that BJP is the is a very big, big party in India. Yeah. With at, uh, now, uh, minimum at least 15 uh, core members. So it's a big in the world itself, big yeah. political party. Actually, BJP is a national party with a regional outlook. Our Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, regularly speaking on that, Sapka Sat, Sapka Bikas. Mm -hmm. We want to grow with everyone. And BJP believes if India has to grow, then every one of the Indians should grow. So pro all the corners of the India, yeah. who were neglected previously. Mm -hmm. So, we are we are basically not a power grabber. We are a power sharer. You're not a power grabber, but you are a power sharer. Uh, that's a very, very interesting comment made by Rupam Goswami, the Assam BJP spokesman. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bindu Lanong, uh, you know, the, the BJP spokesperson is saying that we are a national party with a regional outlook. Now, my question is, is that going to be a serious threat to the regional parties? If, if a big national party like the BJP comes to say that we are a national party, but we have a regional outlook, that if it suits them, they will take up regional issues. And since they, have, they are at power at the center, they will be able to implement and fulfill the aspirations of the people as well. Therefore, my question to you, Mr. Bindu Lanong, I'm coming to you, Mr. Marantosi, with the same question. Uh, Mr. Bindu Lanong, so do you think 
that can pose in the days ahead a very serious threat to regionalism itself. I'm not asking you only about Meghalaya, I'm asking you in general about the Northeast. Uh, the BJP, BJP has been making roads into the Northeast like, uh, like Arunachal Pradesh, like Sikkim and Assam. But then in many parts of the, in other parts of the Northeast, like Nagaland, Mizoram and Meghalaya, I, I, I don't believe that the BJP can uh, infiltrate in these, at least in these three states, Meghalaya, Mizoram and Nagaland. Because the tribal entity, the tribal culture and the tribal life is so deep rooted. But they have Which already, they are already different from the other Mr. parts Lanong, of the Mr. Mr. The Lanong, they are, BJP is already a very big force in Nagaland. They yeah. have 12 members. The deputy chief minister in Nagaland is a uh, member of the BJP. So they have already made inroads in Nagaland. We know that. No, they are not BJP, but supporting the BJP, the ally. They are the ally of the BJP. No, no, they are directly uh, so BJP. So in Meghalaya, members. in Meghalaya also, yeah, carry on. In, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I beg to defer with you. I, it will be difficult for the BJP in Nagaland, in Mizoram and Meghalaya. So, therefore, in other states of the Northeast, they have come up. Gradually, they have come up, even in Assam and Sikkim, as you mentioned. But the case of these three states you know, is different from the rest of the states in Northeast. Now, so therefore, now, I don't believe to, that yeah, hold uh, your thoughts. these hold your thoughts. states will go Hold your thoughts. BJP. Absolutely. Hold your thoughts, Mr. Lanong. Uh, Mr. Marantosi, uh, you know, now, now the same question. You, you are a regional party. Uh, you know, you have, uh, you have made the Congress almost irrelevant in a state like Nagaland. You are a regional party. You are in power. Earlier, it was the Naga People's Front which was in power. But ultimately, how do you respond to this charge? How do you respond to this charge that it is the regional parties uh, which have been giving a platform to the BJP to flourish in many states in the northeastern region? I won't say that the regional parties have been giving uh, has been giving a platform to the BGP, but I think it is on mutual understanding, mutual agreement, mutual, you know, uh, 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 for benefits of for benefit for benefiting each other that uh, we have supported each other, and uh, of course I've been I'm talking from the point of view of Nagaland. But uh, when you come to think of it, larger picture, when you come to talk about the Northeast and the regional parties and the BJP, I would say that, you know, as a political party, a political party exists because of the elected representatives. Elected representatives exist because of the political parties. And therefore, I mean, I would like to say that even if like say we are taking the example of the Sikkim Democratic Front, SDF, yeah. the recent developments. Now, even though the MLAs have joined the BJP, that does not mean that the SDF party has disappeared. The SDF as a party still exists. Similar, and therefore, it does not mean that the uh, BJP has swallowed the entire SDF or the SDF has swallowed the BJP. <coughs> you know, right. what Let I me, mean is... I have to, I have to, I, I'll come back... When, when, when your MLAs <coughs> shift... Yeah. Yeah. I'm just coming back to you in a minute, uh, Mr. Marentosi. Very important point Mr. Marentosi Jamir has made. Although BJP, although SDF MLAs have joined the BJP, but BJP is still, uh, but the SDF continues to remain. It's not that the BJP has gulped or swallowed the entire SDF. I have to go for a break, but very quickly, Mr. Sonam Chering Venchungpa of the SKM. You know, BJP, as we have been discussing, is a robust political party. Now, are you worried that? some of your own ruling SKM party MLS too could change sides or this is an absolutely ruled out affair? 
I don't think so. I don't think so. I think the BJP's uh, uh, mandate or color over national national politics color has changed, and uh, they have, uh, uh, in a way, uh, been very very convincing of the regional parties, and they have grown into a national party, and uh, which accommodates the diversity of India and especially of the northeast. All right, all right. Uh, I will go for a very short break. When I come back, I'll go straight to Aizol, to Dr. C. Lal Sanzuala of the MNF, and to all our panelists. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Welcome back, uh, Dr. Lal Sanjuala in Aizol. Dr. Lal Sanjuala, uh, you know, there is a protest brewing in Sikkim now. Uh, there is a protest by two to three groups. Uh, you know, they are protesting against the SDF, Sikkim Democratic Front MLAs, who were elected on the SDF ticket, but they have joined the BJP. They are saying that this mandate was not for uh, a national party, mandate was for a regional party. Now, what is your response? Uh, is this a justified protest? How do you look at it? Because the people have voted for a particular party with a particular ideology, then the MLS suddenly changed sides. Of course, this is not only happening in Sikkim, this is happening in various parts of the country for many years now. But how, what is your reaction? I think uh, the people there at Sikkim would be furious because they have elected their representative not because of their personality or because they are uh, the candidate, because uh, they voted uh, their representative because of the national, uh, the party which have their ideology, which have their uh, uh, their aim, which needs to be um, implemented. So they are voting for those MLA for wanting their policies to be implemented. Now, they forfeited all those uh, people's trust. Now, the people, I think, will be very furious and very angry about those MLS. And if that happens in Mizoram, Aizol, the protest would be very much and the protest would not be tolerable to the elected MLA. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Mr. P.D. Rai, uh, Mr. P.D. Rai, one of, one of our panelists have said that, you know, 10 MLAs of your party have joined the BJP, but your party still remains. Uh, SDF still remains. The BJP has not, uh, you know, taken over the entire SDF. But you are still you are still a leader of the SDF. Now my question is simple: What about your leader, Mr. Pawan Chamling, the former chief minister, and you? What next or what now, Mr. Rai? Uh, not in absolutely uh, not. We are uh, definitely staying with the uh, Sikkim Democratic Front. Sikkim Democratic Front values are very very straight. It is a very pro people it's a regional party it's a regional entity that has uh, ruled uh, in sikkim for the last 25 years and so therefore i think uh, it is only uh, i will say adjustment of power that has taken place and uh, in uh, our sights are on 2024 okay okay right uh now, now, with this question, I've got a different question from Mr. Sonam Chering Venchungpa, the spokesperson of the ruling SKM in Sikkim. Uh, Sonam, you know, uh, you know, there is an impression in the Northeast now that BJP has become very flexible in its approach, uh, you know, towards the Northeastern region uh, and, and approach as far as, you know, getting into the power structure. Now, 
do you see it as the regionalization of the BJP or do you see it as the saffronization of regionalism? This is a construct, with, this is a sentence that I have coined and I want your response. Do you see it as regionalization of BJP or saffronization of regionalism? Mr. Sonam. Uh, I can only talk for our party, the Sikkim Krantikari Morcha. We are a very, very dedicated lot of, uh, lot of people, a lot of uh, legislative assemblies. We are very, very committed to the people of Sikkim. We are yeah. very, very committed to the new government. We are very, very committed. We have a committed uh, uh, assembly uh, legislatures which are there. If you remember that two of the SDF uh, MLAs have also shifted sides to SKM party and we are in a comfortable majority of 18 pending the by-election which, uh, uh, which is going to happen in three more seats. So 17 is the majority and eight, we have already 18, so very, very, very comfortable. In. You are very, very comfortable. Uh, can I go to Shillong to, uh, okay, we, I'll, I'll, I'll go to Mr. Bindu Lanong in a minute, but Avinav, how do you look at this? Because, uh, you know, as uh, Mr. Rupam Goswami has said that we are a national party with a regional outlook, uh, but Mr. Uh, Ms., Mr. Uh, Marantosi, I'm, I'm coming to you with the same question. Uh, is it going to pose a real problem uh, for the regional parties? For example, take the case of Sikkim. I'm going to ask Sonam this. You know, both the, or, or I'm going to ask Mr. P.D. Rai this question. Both the SDF, SDF people have already joined the BJP, as well as the Sikkim Kranti Kari Morcha are close to the BJP. So both the ruling party and the opposition party are close to the BJP in Sikkim. Now, entire northeastern region, there is an alliance going on. And even if in a state like Assam, where the BJP is very, very comfortable, they are not dumping their regional allies. They have the regional. Take the case of Tripura. They have an absolute majority. But they're keeping the IPTF, indigenous people's front of Tripura with them. So now it's a carefully calculated and planned strategy. I'm coming to you, Rupam, also for, to add to my assessment. Uh, it's a very, very well-planned strategy by the BJP. Sapka Saath, that, that is, they will say that it is Sapka Saath strategy. Now, how do you look at it, Avinav? I think if you look at BJP politics over the years, they have been very flexible with their allies, even during uh, periods of time when the coalition okay. hits, uh, hits a phase of tension. Even in the run-up to the 2019 election, if you look at uh, the case of Shiv Shena, the Shiv Shena had been complaining from the very beginning, but at the end of the, uh, uh, during the uh, <laughs> time of the elections, they contested together. So I think we'll have to speak and appreciate the political acumen of the BJP because it knows that although the Congress is in a desire currently, but it still possesses a network to bounce back. Therefore, if it starts alienating its allies, it can also lead to the building of a counter co uh, consolidation and a counter coalition with the okay. Congress against the BJP. So they will have to block it. And that is one of the main reasons why, irrespective of their political strength, they are taking their allies along with them. And I think that has no, to be spoken no, no, to the credit no, of Mr. the party. Mr. 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 Bindu Lanong, I'm coming, immediately coming to Mr. Marantosi. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bindu Lanong, uh, you see, the question is, uh, you, you are a part of the Meghalaya Democratic Alliance government and the uh, and, uh, party with the maximum number of MLAs now is the Nationalist People's Party. Now, you see the question of survival of the regional parties. Do you think the NPP today is a big regional party that has spread across the Northeast? It is a pan-Northeast regional party now. My question is, in this kind of a scenario, the NPP must have realized uh, that you know to survive it is necessary to expand so I am not asking you to answer on behalf of the uh, NPP my question is uh, as UDP do you think there is uh, there is a danger in the days ahead do you think you have to be very careful in pushing issues that appeal to the uh, local people in terms of administration we are all together in terms of administration. Yeah. We are, we are part and parcel of the country. So therefore, uh, whoever is in power in Delhi, we need to uh, have an understanding. Yeah. Okay. So it's very clear. 
whoever is in power in Delhi, Mr. Madan Tosi, uh, the UDP leader from Meghalaya said, uh, you know, we are part of the administration, we are part of the country, so it is very important to have good relations with whoever is in power in New Delhi. Uh, do you agree with this uh, stand? Do you agree with this view? Yeah, to an extent, I would say that that is uh, true for uh, especially the northeastern states, the smaller states like us, where we have to basically more or less depend on the government of India for our developmental activities. Uh, having said that, in the case of Nagaland, the, 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 I, I'll, <clears throat> I'm coming back to Nagaland again. Yeah. Our alliance, the People Democratic Alliance, you see it was not a post-poll alliance, but rather it was a pre-poll yeah. alliance where we were not sure whether the BGP will come back to power. However, we decided that the NDPP and the BGP should go together and contest the elections. And therefore, uh, in, our, in our case, it was, it, was a, uh, it was a gamble. We were not sure who, who's going to form the government in 2019. But having said that, I, I, I'm repeating myself again, when it comes to states like us, we definitely have to depend on the government of the day at the center for us to, for our, the, uh, for us to take forward our development programs. All right. All right. Uh, now, uh, now, Rupam Goswami, uh, you know, now, most of the regional party leaders, uh, people like uh, Mr. Marentosi Jamir, has been very openly saying, Mr. Bindu Lang Lanong, a veteran political leader belonging to the regional parties, they're very openly saying that for a small states in the northeastern region to develop and grow and prosper, it is extremely important uh, to be... Uh, to have good relations with the ruling party at the center. Now, therefore, therefore, uh, therefore, there is no ideology, there is no ideological collaboration there. It's a, it's a marriage of convenience. Do you agree with this assessment? Therefore, uh, even for the for the BJP uh, to is, that the BJP to it's necessary to realize that this, these are not ideological alliances. These are basically marriages of convenience on both sides. Will it be a correct assessment or not? Uh, Mr. Zamir has said very rightly that we have a pre poll alliance and that time nobody is sure which party will come to the power. Yeah. And we have a long uh, partnership or a long alliance with um, uh, at Nagaland uh, since a very long time. And, and definitely they have also confidence that the BJP is really <coughs> working for the Northeast. So they have uh, real faith on that. And the Congress over a period of 70 years have done nothing for the Northeast. So now all the opposition, basically, uh, the, all the oppositions, they are against the Congress and uh, the alternative is only BJP. So definitely, as we have, Sapka Sat Sapka, because the, um, which Pradhan Manti, uh, Honorable Pradhan Manti believes in it. So, and definitely we work for each and everybody. And now they have noticed that over a period of last five years, every, all the states, they have, uh, yeah. they came to the, <coughs> right. which, uh, the center is functioning. So, so, so you are saying that, you are saying that people have faith and therefore they are aligning with the BJP. There is no other reason. The faith, that's a very interesting element uh, being introduced. That is, it's a faith factor that is actually working. Uh, Dr. Lal Sanjwala, uh, Dr. Lal Sangjuala, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, do you think that, you see, we, we, it's, a, it's federalism. We are a federal structure in India. Do you think if you don't support the party in power at the center, do you think the central government is not going to give funds to any state? I'm asking a general question. It's nothing to do with Mizoram. I'm asking you a general question. Do you think that if you do not support the party in power at the center, do you think the central government will not allocate funds? Central government will not look after that particular state. Do you, do you, what is your response? How do you look at it? No. India is, uh, 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 India is federal in form, actually. India is federal in form. It is okay if coalition for some particular issue or things to implement together, which could be important, uh, which uh, could be 
implemented by the regional party alone, which could not be implemented by the regional party alone. Yeah. But if there is a, any coalition between the uh, uh, the union, uh, uh, government, and the state, it is a federal structure. India is a federal structure mm. that would be non-constitutional, and that will not happen. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But there, people will not elect uh, you because you are Mr. Wasbir Hussein or whoever uh, you are. But they will elect you, hoping that you may fulfill what you promised to fulfill. So we elect a representative MP, uh, member of parliament or whoever, because we uh, feel and we hope that they will fulfill the need of each of the uh, uh, regional party also. Yeah. Okay. In India, there are more than 500 ethnic groups. In India, there are more than 500 ethnic groups, which is wonderful. And India is a great country because of its unity in diversity. Absolutely, so absolutely. That will not happen. No doubt about that, Dr. Lal Sanjuala. No doubt about that. Hold your thoughts. Have... Hold your thoughts. I'm coming back to you. Uh, let me go to Sonam. Sonam Chering, okay. uh, you know, for the first time in 25 years, I'm repeating this question for the first time in 25 years. Sikkim will have a big national party as the state's main opposition. Now, you are an ally. The SKM is an ally of the NDA. Uh, your, MLA, your MP in parliament has openly stated that. My question is, how big is this dilemma for your party, the SKM? Because your main rival, the SDF, they have transformed themselves into the BJP. You are an ally of the BJP. No, is there a dilemma or if so, how big is this dilemma for you? Um, uh, I wouldn't say that for, for sure because if you look at uh, what has happened uh, recently, within three months the SDF MLAs have shifted sides to BJP because it shows the uh, the organization failure and the rot which was there in the Sikkim Democratic Front for the last 25 years. It is only the matter that uh, SKM party through 2009 and we, it took 10 years for us to come to power. And it only it's a manifestation of the rot of the SDF party and it proves that now their base and grassroots okay, level so is Sonam, you are not answering my question directly, but, uh, but I leave you. Uh, I will come back to you. I'll come to Mr. Bindo Lanong, but uh, Mr. P.D. Rai, before, before I go to Mr. Bindu Lanong in Shillong, uh, Mr. P.D. Rai, now both your party, that is the SDF as well as the SK, SKM, are supposed to be close to the BJP and, uh, and there is a confusion about whether both the parties are allies of the BJP, both the SDF as well as the SKM. It's, is it a peculiar situation in Sikkim today, Mr. P.D. Rai? I'm not sure if they are an ally of the BJP <laughs> just yet. Okay. I think uh, that alliance is yet to be figured out. <clears throat> yes, there. Uh, you see, in our uh, scheme of things, Mr. Pawan Chamling and Mr. Hishel Lachungpa, who's the Rajya Sabha MP, are, we, uh, are uh, staying put in the uh, Sikkim Democratic Front. But in so far as their Lok Sabha MP is concerned, yes, he has uh, uh, he has not said that he is an NDA, but he is supporting the uh, the NDA formation. Let me also make one more thing clear. Before we, uh, you know, I think on the twenty first of May, and this is very important, on the twenty first of May, uh, just before the, I think two days before the results came out. Uh, the Sikkim Democratic Front Party, which was, uh, you know, represented in the Ashoka Hotel meet of the NDA, in which uh, the Honorable Prime Minister as well as the then uh, uh, also the Bharatiya Janata Party President, Mr. Amit Shah, assured all those present in that particular house that it doesn't matter, we are not here. The, the exact words were something like, we are not here so that we want the numbers. It is, we are all together here because okay. we want to make uh, okay. India strong. And this cooperation of uh, parties is not only, it doesn't matter what the uh, results will be. 
this cooperation will continue even as we move into the future. Now, now I'm, I'm, uh, I'm coming to you, Mr. Bindula Nong. Uh, I was asking this question to, uh, uh, to another panelist, to Dr. Lal Sangjuala. Uh, Mr. Lanong, you know, India is a, f is a, f is a federal, uh, uh, we, we have a federal structure in the country. A question is, uh, your colleagues like Mr. Marin Tosi has said that it is very important to uh, be with a, a, a national party, party which is ruling the government at the center because we are small states. But my question to you, Mr. Lanong, is this. Suppose you do not support the party at the center. Can the center deny you your rights? Can the center not provide you the requisite funds for development and growth? What do you think? We are part and parcel of the country. No one can deny that. And uh, there should be no step motherly treatment where development is concerned. The constitution is very clear. The constitution is very clear that uh, the states have their exclusive right for yeah. the center's uh, financial allocation. So therefore, there is no such uh, thing as uh, the center will, uh, you know, will uh, 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 ill-treat or give a step motherly treatment uh, to states which do not belong to the party you know, at the center. Right, right. So that is one. <clears throat> that is one, right. Uh, now, Rupam Goswami, uh, you know, Prime Minister has made very insignificant uh, thing. He said that <coughs> we will support, we will work for those people who voted for us. We'll also work for those people who did not vote for us. I think this is a very statesman-like and extremely significant statement which he has made soon after the massive uh, verdict that you have got. So what does it signify, actually? Um, uh, Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi is <coughs> always speaking on that. He always said that after the election, we are a government for every citizen of India. So to grow India, uh, to, to bring India to in such a position, uh, every Indian should grow. Then only their India will grow. So we are thinking on that line. And that is why his, his dialogue, Sabka Sat, Sabka Bikas. And it is a reality now. Reality. So, so it's not just a statement, it's a reality. Uh, uh, Avinav, how do you look at this? No, I think I would agree with the BJP spokesperson. And I think any prime minister, any government is constitutionally bound to work for all its citizens, irrespective, irrespective, of irrespective of who has of voted or not voted. So it's very normal. And I think it's a part of his constitutional responsibilities. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Marantosi Jameer, uh, uh, I'm running short of time. Uh, how do you look at the future of regionalism? Uh, of course, we all know now that uh, one party rule has ended in this country, uh, you know, and uh, the BJP has said that Congress MOOC Northeast, Congress Free Northeast, it is almost becoming a reality now. Uh, and in this, the regional parties also have a big role to play because initially it was the regional parties, uh, you like it or not, whether you admit or not, it is the regional parties, many of whom sided with the BJP and help the party spread its tentacles, uh, grow, and, and give them a solid foundation in the Northeastern region. In this backdrop, Mr. Marantosi Jameer, how do you look at the future of regionalism in the whole of the Northeastern region? First of all, <clears throat> as you have correctly pointed out, I think now we are in an era of uh, alliance governments. Yes. And in the Northeast, the regional parties will still play a very major role. And also, I think uh, today, why in the Northeast the Congress does not have a single government is probably because of what you, uh, I'll say adaptability. The Bharatiya Janata Party has adapted themselves very well to the needs, the local needs of the Northeast. And by them going hand in hand with the regional parties, they have established their governments in the various states in the Northeast. Unfortunately, today, why we don't have a single Congress government in the Northeast, I feel, is because 
they are yet to come out of the shell. You know, the grand old party mentality where they have refused to, they, 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 they refuse to align themselves with regional parties, but they, 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 I feel that they still have that ideology that they can go at it alone. But today, regional parties, I think, are making a very big comeback into the, especially in the northeastern states. And therefore, I think this trend will continue for some time. And together, the BJP and the regional parties can grow. Are you, are you saying that as well? Yes. So long as they, they maintain this policy of adaptability of the region, I think this, is, <coughs> this, is the, 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 this trend is going to continue. Absolutely. Very important. Very interesting. So long as they continue to maintain adapt, so long they are adaptable to the special circumstances and aspirations of the people in the northeastern region. Uh, Sonam Chering, uh, you know, now is there somewhere in the back of your mind, are you worried that the BJP, I was asking this question not to you but to some other panelists earlier, Somewhere in the back of your mind, do you think that the BJP may actually end up gobbling up or eating up all the smaller regional parties? Sonam. For, for a state like Sikkim and for all the northeastern states, we feel that uh, BJP has been very, very accommodative in terms of uh, partnering with regional parties because as I've already told you, at the central level, we support the BGP and we are part of the NDA. NDA. Yeah. So even in the state, they have been very supportive because whatever issues are there in the state, we have to, we have to take it to the center. And they are very supportive of whatever concerns are there of the Sikkimese people and of Sikkim. So in that way, we feel that they are very, very accommodative. Very, very accommodative. BJP being very accommodative, that's what you were saying. Uh, Dr. Lal Jwala, what are your concluding remarks uh, as a one of the very big regional parties of the northeastern region, the MNF. How do you think is the future of regionalism? Once again, Dr. Lal Sanjwala. Regionalism, especially Mizo National Front, will keep on existing because uh, we are supporting the NDA and, and we will keep on supporting this coalition with this NDA as long as they are safeguarding uh, the NDA or the BJP. They are safeguarding the interest of the Mizou uh, uh, interest. Uh, and especially, there is one provision in the Constitution. It is called Article 371G. Yes, that's applicable which is to the Mizoram. agreement between the Mizou National Front, the people at large, and the uh, <coughs> government of India. If they safeguard uh, those Article 371G and any other uh, important provisions uh, which are for the development of the Mizo nations, I mean Mizo people, Mizoram state, we will keep on supporting them. But uh, turning Mizo, the regional party, Mizo National Front or whatever other regional party to BJP is out of question. Okay. But we will support uh, so where very there is clear, development, very, very clear support. where there is safeguarding the nations. Absolutely. Now, Mr. Bindolanong, how do you view the situation as a veteran political leader of the Northeast? Mr. Lanong. Yeah, this question is very, very important uh, that uh, if, if democracy, through democracy, should... Uh, continue and stay in India, in this country, the regional parties, the national parties, and all the parties recognized by the Election Commission of India, yeah. recognized by the law, should remain as they are. And there, there should be no power uh, either in the Election Commission or any power that be in the union government who should disturb, disturb this position and federalism should stay and continue if democracy is, is to remain. Absolutely, federalism has to continue if democracy has to stay and flourish. Rupam Goswami, your last words. No, I am really thankful to the all regional parties of Northeast who have faith on us. 
that we are growing together. And I can assure you, the BJP will definitely keep the interest of Northeast and definitely work for the Northeast to go ahead. Because in the over the last 70 years, we have been deprived under the uh, uh, Congress regime. So definitely BJP will uh, move forward Northeastern region to uh, such a uh, stage that they can be a compete with the other state of the nation. Okay, I think uh, that is uh, once again an assurance from the BJP to the Northeastern region. Uh, Avinav, your parting words. Mm, I think regional politics will continue to remain relevant as long as there would be regional issues and regional concerns. But we'll also have to remember that coalition politics and power sharing are all instrumental devices and will, uh, will be valid as long as either of the political parties would have a need for the other party. As a political party, I think BJP has uh, a right and a desire to expand. And therefore, it will rightly, in the coming days, it will try to expand into newer and newer domains. So I think the regional party should also take it as a wake-up call and should become more proactive in addressing regional concerns and in representing regional concerns. Absolutely. I think uh, both the BJP and the regional parties now need each other. We'll, we are talking of the northeastern context. Uh, take the case of Assam, where the Assam Gana Parishad had were gone out of the uh, BJP government in Assam, but they were in a hurry to come back uh, because they need each other. Perhaps who knows who, who needs the other party uh, more is a separate debate. I'm not going to go into that. But yes, uh, the regional parties and the BJP are coexisting in the northeastern region and that is something which has come out on this discussion with the very very senior regional party leaders who are in debate as far as also the other political commentators and others who are uh, uh, basically saying that the two formations that is the BJP on one side and the regional parties have a scope to coexist and they are coexisting and this is the secret behind the near elimination near route of the Congress from the region. On that note, I end this edition of Northeast tonight. I thank all my panelists for participating in this very engaging discussion. Good night and goodbye.